Perhaps you belong in Slytherin. If you're playing Hogwarts Legacy, stop, for you're probably doing it wrong. Go straight to the settings menu and enable upscaling. Why? Because it gives you more for free. It's as close to magic as you can get. It doesn't matter how fast or how slow your PC is, just as long as you have a PC. If the option's there to upscale, then it's always worth it, as it gives you either higher frame rates, higher resolutions, or enough extra computing power to ramp the other graphics settings up instead. All of those choices are up to you. But one thing is not, for you must enable upscaling. I command you to. So there are three upscalers worth using, and two that aren't. Choose wisely. You can forget about these, these essentially sharpen the image. Which is better than nothing, but a lot worse than the other options, and since the other options are available, it makes these kind of pointless. Just to prove this point, here is FSR1, which is the bad sort of upscaling, versus FSR2, which is the good kind. Nothing needs to be said here that your eyes can't already tell you. FSR2 is undeniably better in every conceivable way. Use that instead. So that's why I recommend using one of these three upscalers, which are all good and all work in a similar way by building up a better looking image than were you not to use them. And to save you from having to watch any more of this forsaken video, I'll just tell you to enable FSR2, set it to performance mode, and if you feel the image looks too shimmery, then set it to quality mode instead. Done. That's as simple as I can make this. But if you carry on watching, then I will teach you about the dark art that is upscaling. Welcome to Professor Click's Upscaling 101 class. Nvidia makes DLSS, AMD makes FSR, and Intel makes XS. I mean, they want us to pronounce it XESS. But no. So you'd think if you had an Intel card, then you'd only be able to use XS and so on. But no, it doesn't work like that. Because everyone can use FSR and XS, no matter which graphics card you have. Isn't that nice of them? Of these two that anyone can use, FSR2 has been around for longer, and in my opinion looks better. It also has more features, like an ultra performance option and adjustable sharpness. XS doesn't allow for this just yet. And since some people think that more sharpness equals more quality, I'd recommend trying FSR and ramping the sharpness up to maximum. This will tell you if you're one of those people, and if you're not, then turn the sharpness back down again. Simple. But the more important option is this one, because this actually adjusts the resolution the game runs at, and the lower the resolution, the faster your game will run, which is better, but the more mistakes with the final image the upscaling will make. So that's why using a good upscaler is important. So which upscaler is best? Well, that's a very complicated and controversial question that only a fool would confidently answer, though it's definitely DLSS, because it has the most tweaks and extras and in my opinion does the best all-round job. I don't like that it's only available to owners of RTX cards, but if you do have one, then you might as well use DLSS. However, if you don't have one, then don't be disappointed, for FSR2 and XS are good alternatives, and are getting better all the time, and they will still get you 90% of the upscaling benefit. Just enable one of these and we can argue about the remaining 10% some other time. We're splitting hairs here, literally. But say you don't want higher frame rates. Say the best image quality is the only thing that matters to you. This is where another feature of DLSS comes in, which is known as DLAA, which you can enable like so. This feature uses all of DLSS's tricks to improve the image quality, but it starts off at your monitor's resolution. So think of it as being like the ultimate form of anti-aliasing. So if you really hate jagged edges to stuff and sprinkly looking hair, then DLAA is your best chance to eliminate all that distracting stuff. If this still isn't enough, then you'll want to consider downscaling, but I won't cover that in this video. Unfortunately, DLAA and DLSS are only available for certain NVIDIA graphics card owners. So for the rest of us who are wanting the highest quality upscaling option available, then I suggest you start with XS's ultra quality setting, which out of all the upscaling options has the highest base resolution. But how do you know which settings are good enough? Ignorance is bliss, my friend. But if you really have to know and want to learn how to know, my advice with upscaling is to drop the settings as low as you can before you start noticing the problems. And then you raise them a bit again. Remember earlier when I said we were splitting hairs literally and you rolled your eyes thinking I had misused the word literally? Ha! <laughs> Never! Because a good way to see how robust your upscaling method is, is to find some hair and to stare at it. Because hair is hard to render. Possibly the hardest thing for upscaling to deal with, because it has to render so many sub-pixel details and to split those hairs in half. You could say it's the hairy grail of video game graphics. So what I do- Fluffies, no, stop. So what I do to benchmark an upscaling setting is to find someone with a good head of hair and a big bushy beard and to get right up close to it, as close as you can almost into it, and then to turn the upscaling setting down as far as you can before it starts to look bad. Worse. Whatever. So come with me on a quest around Hogwarts to find the biggest, bushiest beard we can. Must be weekend, because there weren't any adults around Hogwarts. 
Just students. Students everywhere. And nobody this side of a picture frame with facial hair to speak of. What a shame. Seems like all these children have been left to their own devices in one of the most dangerous places on planet Earth. A place where they're here to learn yet constantly sky from class, host illegal fight clubs underground, shit on the floor, and where almost every exam gets cancelled because of dark lords who seem utterly obsessed, threatened and repeatedly defeated by secondary school students. Fun fact, a very long time ago, someone from my family once took Voldemort on a tour around Cornwall. Anyway, here's the back of my head, compared using different methods of upscaling. Yes I know there's writing in the way, but this writing is what's important, for this shows how many pixels there are in each comparison. Forget about the resulting resolution, it's all zoomed in so it doesn't matter anyway. What matters is how good a job each of these upscalers can do for the number of pixels that they're based upon. The lower the resolution, the faster your game could run. They're all running the same resolution apart from the top left, which should look the best and run slowest, and the top right, which should look the worst but run the fastest. So of interest here is how DLSS, XS and FSR quality modes compare with each other, and how closely they can resemble DLAA, which is the golden standard in this comparison. On the right hand side is a battle of the low quality modes, where NIS and FSR1 alternate between each other, and with ultra performance DLSS trying to compete with just one quarter the number of pixels up above them. If this is getting too technical for you, don't worry, I won't say any more. But those of you who know what you're looking for, you know what you're looking for here. So yeah, DLAA and DLSS are only available to owners of RTX graphics cards, but FSR2 is kind of like DLSS, and if you mix it with downsampling then you get something similar to DLAA. And if you really want to feel better about not having DLSS, then check this out. If we zoom in really far, I mean really far, then you can make out pixel trails, which makes using DLSS literally unplayable. Literally. With upscaling there is no clear winner, but if you don't use upscaling at all then you're definitely a loser. The only thing about DLSS that you can't imitate at the moment is the frame generation feature, which is only available to owners of the RTX 4000 series. This frame generation tech is also known as DLSS3, but it's a separate tech from DLSS2. It works with it where DLSS2 upscales the image and then DLSS3 creates new images from that upscaled image. This sort of doubles your frame rate again, but this doesn't come with all the benefits of a higher frame rate. In fact in some ways it behaves like a lower frame rate by introducing extra delay to all your actions. But trust me, this delay is only very small and won't matter in this kind of game. The real value to using frame generation is that it smooths out the game's frame rate. And this is really handy in Hogwarts Legacy because it's currently such an unoptimised stuttery mess. It just makes things feel more fluid. So unfortunately all these DLSS features are not available for people with other kinds of cards. But never fear, for AMD has promised a similar sort of thing to this frame generation technology, which I'm sure they'll roll out once they've figured out how to make it. And I suspect they will rather predictably call it FSR3. And since Harry Potter has got me into all this fortune telling stuff, I'm going to say that Excess will get the same sort of thing at some point in the distant future as well. Maybe they'll call it excessive. Anyway, that's the end of my class. Now I've got to head off. These muggles aren't going to murder themselves. Still 